Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Gabby Ree Show. Okay, Elijah Allen Blitz. We are here with our bonus episode. And I'll quickly and hopefully not annoyingly remind people that this is just a very casual conversation that is pretty reflective of what we do at my kitchen counter. Pretty much. Our gathering spot and you and I for how many years now? Seven years? No, more because I mean, I think I met Brody when she was eight. Oh, I was yeah, strike so that long str- time. from the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a long time. Yeah. We've been we've been wrestling around you convincing me that uh, these are device these devices are tools yeah. and me being skeptical, thinking that that's why it's an important conversation to have, because it's about bridging the gaps. And, you know, it's funny, I got interviewed yesterday by a college student. I say yes. If people are kind of doing work that um, I, I feel connected to Mm -hmm. big or small, I, I say yes. Um, and, and conversely, I could be someone who has a huge show or podcast and I say no, cause I'm like, I don't have anything to do with that. Right. So it's this kid, he's a college student and, uh, and, um, he's an athlete at his college. Um, he said something about like, oh, you know, how do you, we're talking about listening. I said, you know, when I do this podcast, it's very different with you and I, I talk over you. I swear at you. I don't do that with my regular guests. This is a guests. real conversation. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am much more. Fuck um, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> right. And when I have my guests, I'm trying to really feature them and extract valuable information. Yeah. Anyway, and I said, but I, I really try to listen. And, um, and the other thing that's happening is I'm trying to keep an open mind. So what happens is whoever is coming here, I have read their books or I've researched them extensively. I know a lot of where they're coming from or their opinions. And I know if I, where I sort of agree or don't agree before they get here. And then what I try to do now, it's kind of, the, you know, in the last year or so is I try to throw that all out the window and just see where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so I, I feel this way about the conversations I have with you is rather than locking down all these opinions about how I feel about the phone or the computer or AI or all of it, uh, I'm trying again and again to to just really hear it. Mm. It's, it's hard to do. Yeah. And my meaning maker, my brain, always working double time. Meaning maker, yeah. Is like, yes, no, black, white, good, bad. And it's like, no, man, it's nuance. Yeah. It's, and transitions are super uncomfortable. And we are in a huge, con- we are in, I think, not only transition, and, and you hear Joe Rogan say it all the time, and I, I actually think it's true, which is we're sort of going from this one type of person. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've already tried to go against our biology, right, by uh, the medications that we take and how, the kind of our lifestyle, the way it's set up. We, we you know, we're flying in airplanes. I mean, you know, we, we left our biology in certain ways. Um, to to really living near alongside with integrated with technology yeah oh so you when you said one kind of person you mean like merging with technology or becoming a different yes yeah and if you had said this to me 10 years ago i i would have been like "Uh, no but it's like i work with this photographer philip dixon since 1988 and he said and he's really a character he's older than i am and he said joe joe you know the computer's are leading the humans. And then he imitated us looking at our phones, walking around the street. And when he said that, I thought, oh, okay, there's an element to that. And now we do have the technology to do that. So that leads me right off the bat. I, I mean, that, yeah, that is. When he said that, that I is, was like, Ooh. that is, that is, I mean, in how long ago did he say that? Seven, eight years ago. Oh, okay. I thought it was longer. But yeah, anyway, still. Maybe more, yeah. maybe 10 years. It was just whenever the smartphone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought if when he said it, it really framed it for me. Yeah. Anyway, so right. I mean, it's like you, you, ever, you know, Terrence McKenna he says mm-hmm. that thing. He's like, no one's in charge. He's like, he's like, history is a freight train on a dark and stormy night. Like we're just, boom, we're just going, and no one is in charge. Yeah. And there's something about. I mean, there's both sides of that because there's this thing of like, all right, if we really don't have control, like the you know katie says no decision no fear so there is that element if you can of just complete 
surrender and all right, I'm open. And there's the element of like, wait, 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 what? We got no control over anything? Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, and it's an interesting thing about accountability and responsibility, right? Mm. Like, I come from this hard lined place of accountability and trying, you know, self awareness. And um, I, I mean, in sports, right? You are really taught about accountability. And um, you go, you get to a certain place. And certainly by my age, you get to a place. And I said this to Laird the other day I, I vacillate between excuse me, I oscillate between, I just want to check out, you know, and kind of like go live wherever and just, you know, the kids are almost grown and do my thing. And then being like, oh no. And then I said to Laird, we're at the age where we have to be, we've got to participate even more because part of our job is to help usher in the younger group. And they, it's not that they want to hear it or don't want to hear it. It's being there. Mm. It's sort of the way you parent a teenager. They're like, get away from me. But then you just sit right there. And sometimes I feel like that when I see 20, you know, teenagers and 20 somethings, it's like, I'm also like, no, we just have to be here because no one is in control. So we talk about that. A lot of the adults are not conducting themselves really well. And I don't mean pretend to conduct yourself well, yeah, you no, know, I, I mean, know. really like in your every, like yeah. come to my house right now, for the most part, it kind of matches, you yeah. know, like whatever it is that I'm trying to present. Cause yeah. I, I don't want to play that game. Yeah. That's hard. That's a hard game. No, don't, 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 don't play it's, the fake it game. No, just, it's been 35 years. It, exactly. You would just, have heard. Exactly. You just live it. Just, <laughs> you would have heard. This is, this is what you get. I this know. is what's real. Yeah. This I mean, is, listen, yeah. I have some secrets Yeah. and I have, you know, Laird and I have some personal things that have gone down that are not public knowledge, but, yeah. um, that's just cause you have private, a certain kind of privacy, but mm -hmm. that isn't about like, we're trying to fake anyone out. Right. Um, right. so I really do appreciate that you are a person who is always helping me keep that open mind. Um, that's why it's imp always important to have friends of all various ages. Um, but it leads me right into the Neuralink. Oh, yeah. Talking about, mm. you know. Merging. Merging. Um, but it, no one is in control. I'm, I'm certainly not in control, but I do think it's important to show up. And if you're even Maybe. if you're 17 years old, 16, I don't care, 10, it's like. You can, I mean, your job is to really try to build your life, but as I do think that we can all participate. Yeah. We can make it a better place. I, I, I agree. And that's, that's part of the conundrum that I see with that, where there's so much of this that just does feel out of our hands. And that's why, like, hearing that, it resonates because I'm just like, this is work. It's already going. The train is moving. Yeah. And then it's coming back to that Moga Dot thing about Superman has landed mm. and we get to help shape the direction of the yeah. trajectory. So, I think conducting ourselves like we do have an impact. I, I, I mean, I feel like that's going to work out better in the long run for everyone. Yeah. Because it's like, what, you know, whether you call it karma or just you know, whatever you put out is what you get back. Mm -hmm. I've seen that on every level of life in terms of from what you eat to what you say to what you think. You know, just mm -hmm. how you are is what you get it pretty much i mean it seems pretty consistent maybe there's some exceptions or there appear to be some exceptions in the world you see people and you're like wait how what but overall, well like I, laird says some people you know step in shit every once in a while like yeah, luckily yeah or we don't see them pay all at once at the end that's right that's right and maybe the cost is you have to live with yourself knowing these things yeah yeah and that's that's i, I interviewed ken right out and he said listen the the punishment of quitting is way worse than any pain you're going to experience doing a long race. Yeah. That internal grind, you yeah. know. But so let let's talk about the the neural link. Yeah. It that this was pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Did you see it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's absolutely worth watching. So there's there's a guy I mean don't Neuralink in case people don't know is one of Elon Musk's companies. <laughs> How does this guy have time? Yo. <laughs> Please tell me. I mean, I don't wish this for him, but I know his life has to be a disaster. I mean... How do I, you do it? I, I don't have any answers. I can barely or, connect with no, the people in my life, never I, mind running seven companies that I'm, all are yeah. just stratospheric. Yeah. I have no <laughs> no answer. I have no inkling. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but this was incredible. It's worth watching for anybody that hasn't seen it because you see this guy, I think he was in a car accident. Wait, explain. I cut you okay. off. Explain oh, Neuralink so for it's, people. Brain computer interface, and that is basically putting a chip in your brain. Not basically, it is. You're putting it. Where, where's the battery? 
I don't, know? I don't know how it all works. Okay. Yeah, I haven't even dove that deep. Because I remember when they first announced it, I was like, this is way off. And then like all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, no, it's not. Like, it's, 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 really, it's really close. Like, a lot closer than we think in this whole, you know, Joe Rogan, even the Terrence Mc, it come, actually Terrence McKenna again had that quote that we as humans are the midwives for the machine world. Anyway, kind of like table that as this Neuralink conversation. I need to do mushrooms or psychedelics. These guys come up with some stuff. Anyway, I, I, okay. would, I would recommend it for you. I'm not saying for everybody. I'm just saying for oh, you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Microdosing enough already. <laughs> you just go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Again, Terrence McKenna talks about it. He's like, if you want to see aliens, take seven grams in silent darkness. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Neuralink. Uh, yeah, they put the computer chip in this guy's brain. This guy was, um, in a car accident and, uh, paralyzed from the neck down. And, uh, he had to, you know, do his, all of his movements and like texting through like a straw. I think there's some device, you yeah. know, to text and call people and, you know, whatever he's trying to do. And they put this device in his brain and I think they wanted to keep it anonymous or like he had the option to, and he said, no, I want to talk about this publicly. Like, this is so incredible. I think it's been a month now. And so he's come out and spoken about it and he's like, you don't understand. Like, I wake up at 7 a.m. every morning excited for the day. And I didn't think after my accident that was ever going to happen again. Hmm. And he's like, I can play. He loves playing chess. He's like, I can play chess with my friends because he's moving the pieces with his mind. He plays video games with his buddies. He can text. Like, it you just it's it'll make you emotional watching this kid's reaction. I'm mean, not kid. He's a guy. But yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So See, to me, this is where technology, it was like the original modern medicine you know, building bridges, automobile, like this is the magic of invention. Yeah. Honestly, all of these things and even the AI stuff we're talking about, the cameras, all lights, it's, it's all the, ma this is to me the magic of invention too. Yeah. And, and there's going to be prices that come along with it. Like I heard someone say, if you invent the plane, you invent the plane crash. You know, well, it's yeah. like, but that's an it, accident. No, okay, but, or, you, you know, yeah. yeah, but all of these things, like, I don't think when they invented social media, it was designed to become the clusterfuck that it is, you know, I, I it was I, really to find cute girls, right? I don't know what the, or maybe, I guess, yeah, with right? this, the Zuckerberg thing uh -huh. at Harvard, yeah, I guess that was kind of the backstory, but whatever it was, it, you know, it was the, on the service, it was like said to connect the world or whatever. That was the, you know, mission statement. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that all of these, uh, not getting all, a lot of these things that we talk about, I think they are, at least have the potential to be that magic and that kind of a thing. I mean, it's, it's, where, where, it, seeing that Neuralink thing, it's like where this is all going. If you just start to look at, this is a crazy number and it's going to kind of be not hard. It's in all, very difficult. I can't comprehend it, but the processing power of, like it's like co compute processing power per second has increased 20 quadrillion fold in the last 80 years. Like it's, you would just look at these charts and it's just off the map, cannot comprehend. So when we see this now with Neuralink, that's why my mind just goes, trains left the station, we're off the track. Like this is just, cause okay, that's right now, that's today. And what's yeah. next? And it's just like, and we're in that exponential that you talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, 20 quadrillion in the last 80 years. Like, okay, so what's next, you know? And it's just like, what happens when you double this and double this and double this? And oh my God. I mean, we're talking about full on telekinesis potentially very soon where you're just like manipulating objects with your mind and having full conversations without. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going with that? I, it, what, do, <laughs> what do you mean? If you, if you follow that the idea that all of these things are doubling yes. and, and actually the current reports are saying that, I think we talked about this last time that the, the compute power of AI is actually 10 Xing every six months. There's been nothing like that in history, not even close. Like this is an incalculable speed that these things are progressing at. If this is the trajectory we're on, you have to take all guardrails off. Like we don't have an intuition for where this goes. You have, the, the, okay. we, just, we cannot. I, so, but I, this is a really neophyte question. My understanding though, is you need room space power to generate all of this. Like for right now, that's what I'm thinking. Like you, so when you're saying think outside the box, mm -hmm. think there is no box anymore. <laughs> the box has been, but it's just not going to happen in open space and air. I don't know. Why, but why, okay, I'm just saying 
any limiting factors to try and comprehend what's happening, mm -hmm. I think it's most helpful if you remove them. Anything that would okay. say, you can't do this, or it's not going to be like, dude, I think all, right now all bets are off. Like for us to comprehend what's happening and the speed of what's happening, what's coming, mm -hmm. six months, a year, two years, we just have to completely, like, not, not like just open your mind to anything is possible. And just that's how I think we can start to see and not, not, I don't even think we're going to be able to again intuit it because it's not going to be intuitive. Right. Like, this is a whole you can't imagine you get straight, like, that's the quote, stranger than we can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's probably a few guys or girls out there that are like, Oh, I have some ideas. I think, I think, a, I think there's definitely people they with all ideas. seem to be pe people building rockets too, but I guess, I, <laughs> but okay, <laughs> but, he, but I'm saying even those people with ideas, mm. I don't think they know, and that's what I'm saying. That's the you know, runaway freight train on a dark and stormy night. It's it's like, I don't think that there really is a, a, the human capability to understand this right now. We might have models and projections, but I think they're either already broken or going to break very, very soon. Mm. I find this fa so fascinating because again, I'm sort of this rudimentary, I kind of always think in this rudimentary way. And it's like, you know, we can't figure out power and there are some indications that alternative, the alternative solutions actually have a larger footprint mm -hmm. in certain ways than what we have now. Yeah. And we've talked about this. China doesn't adhere to the same rules we adhere. So we are shutting our coal plants down, but they're built 300 more yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. And I, so I just always love these kind of juxtapositions that we're, we sort of are so fantastical and out in outer space and, you know, AI and we're going to levitate things, but we like our, we're going to have rolling, you know, power outages or, yeah, you know, maybe it's, it's, that is a definite possibility. And I think it's similar. I, we've talked about it that the, like when the, you know, early 1900s mm -hmm. and like they were just panicked in New York that the streets were filling up with horse shit. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like in the next year or so, it's just like, we are going to be overrun. There's nowhere to walk. The streets are just piles of feet high with horse poop everywhere. And they could not have imagined the invention of the car. Yeah. It was just outside the realm of possibilities. Mm. And that's where I think we need to be thinking is outside the realm of possibilities because that's where we're at. Mm. Like, do you remember the movie Minority Report? Yeah. So when they did that, I think it was like 2002 ish. And, and they like Steven Spielberg assembled this team of the just most incredible future thinking for like uh, Kevin Kelly was the, one of the first editors of Wired magazine. Jaron Lanier, like the pioneer of he just went reality. to MIT and said, let's go. Not just MIT, but Silicon yeah. Valley. He had them all like, convened in L.A. and they had this huge think tank. And it was like, if you look at it, it's unbelievable. They predicted, you know, the self-driving cars and like the augmented reality stuff and all these things. But if you look at their phones. They're like little Bluetooth headsets because they couldn't have seen that a few years later, Steve Jobs is going to come out and be like, there's one more thing called the iPhone. Yeah. And it's so, the iPhone is so much more advanced than what they had in that movie. But everything else is so right up. But I'm just, those, that little thing, you know, changed everything. Do we actually know who invented the smartphone? I mean, it's, it's the, it was, a, it's sort of, is it a collective that was at Apple that he was directing and driving? Like, do we know who it's a long story and, it, and it's not just Apple. There's other companies trying to do it. The, the Apple had this thing called the Newton, which mm -hmm. was in the like early nineties and it was a device that got scrapped. So like that was kind of a first iteration. Apparently they actually had the iPad first because what it was, was the, 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 the touch screen feature. And it was like this incredible thing. And there's, it's a longer story, but basically the shortest version of it is that he saw that the, the thing that was going to disrupt them because their iPod was the number one selling thing at the time. And he was like, we need to go into phones. And so we need, even though this tablet thing is ready, we need to take this and put it into a phone. So it's like a miniature version that you can touch the screen. That's a super yeah. simplified version of a long story. And there's a lot of other players and it's, yeah. So Truth be told, did you know I was a diehard BlackBerry person? No, I did not. <laughs> you, until when? When did you change? I just held on to the very end. Until when? I just, I mean, the kids were on me too. They were young, but they were on me to switch over. And I was like, I'll never let go of the BlackBerry. Until when? <sighs> Maybe 10, no. No, no. When it when did uh, when did two thousand eight was was uh, social media right? iPhone came out in two thousand seven. Yeah. Uh, Facebook launched two thousand 
four, I think. Yeah. But, uh, like, I probably like 2009 or 10. Oh, okay. okay. I held off for like right, three or four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but people, I yeah. mean, everyone had flipped over for already. Sure. And I was yeah, like, yeah. you idiots with your finger and missed t- tapping and, you know, all of this stuff, like trying to type. Yeah. Yeah. A Blackberry was pretty wonderful. Yeah. I like, actually never had one. Yeah. Oh, I went, you didn't? I went right from the brick Nokia. Duck, 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 duck. And yeah. somehow too, yeah, you could go into government issued. You could go into government buildings, a federal building with a BlackBerry, right? Not an iPhone, right? Like somehow that was important to me. Yeah. What was I doing? Was I a spy at the I passport ba- building? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> anyway, I just I think it was. I was like, I'm not going with this trend, right? Right. And then probably because I started switching my computer, and then the iPad came out. Yeah. It's just then everything got. You know how you're in the it. ecosystem. Yeah. So you. You mentioned, um, and you and you sort of said, "Hey, maybe it's not even worth talking about." But I, just, I don't know. I heard you say it, so I thought I'd bring it up about uh, that uh, Microsoft bought or uh, inflection. So this is interesting. Remember the Pi chatbot that we've talked to? Yeah, it's actually gotten a lot better. We can really see how she's doing now. What? Um, hey, Pi, how you doing? We're just checking in. We're in the middle of a podcast. Want to say hi? doing great thanks for checking in and wow a podcast that is so exciting oh. hi everyone what's the podcast about is it related to ai I, it is but no, don't worry stop oh. by we um <laughs> I, I sped up her voice so that sounds a little oh weird. i was like what? yeah no i because you I and your speed i know I, I i yeah oh. I, did, I did speed up her people voice. might hear me talk about this a lot yeah um, what's your reading pace usually two and a half times oh wait what right. which company are you frustrated that they're not four times audible, or whatever audible Audible. Oh they, Where audible, do they go? Audible. Yo. Where do they 3. go? 3.5. 5. They only give, go to 3.0. Give me four. <laughs> give me four. Come on. I can barely remember it when it's regular speed. Oh, well, Pi's like listening to us this whole time. Yeah. What All else right, is new? My whole by. house is listening. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah. what? Tell me about. Yeah. So, the, the inflection thing. Anyway, uh, it's a, it, it's an incredible company. And, he, you know, he was, we've talked about him. He's Mustafa Suleiman, who was one of the original founders of DeepMind, which was bought mm-hmm. by Google that beat, you know, the Ch- Go champion. It was this big deal. Uh, so he started this company, Inflection, and it's just seeing these Microsoft moves. They're you know they're now the most valuable company in the world over Apple. Yeah, uh, and it's well that's because of OpenAI, right? It's it's okay, yeah, because of AI period, but yeah, pretty okay. much because of OpenAI. Okay. But this is another move in that space. So because of all these like antitrust, like rig, all just basically skirt around the regulations, mm-hmm. they're all getting really smart, and they're like, all right, we're not going to purchase this company because then we would come under this microscope from the government. We're going to invest heavily and acquire some of your top talent. Mm-hmm. So that's the move that they're playing. Now, when you say top talent, that also means IP or other. Th- I don't know. That's not. I don't okay. think it's because that would probably be more of a purchase. And that would, okay. I, I think, but it's more like Mustafa is now working mm-hmm. at Microsoft. Mm. Um, but it, and like that whole inflection team is probably really integrated. Almost certainly. So, is there Microsoft. an empty building with a t- with a you know? inflection on it but nobody's there i don't know i don't think it's like probably i don't i don't know it, it, it could be but I, I don't think it's like that i've heard that you know they made the the they like made sure the investors were taken care of and why would somebody do that why would he do that he had his own thing going and now kind of he's working for somebody else money yeah, uh i don't know if it's money uh i think it's probably or mobility rocket access fuel. rocket fuel access i mean that's that you know right? the the story of open ai the when the public when mm. they go with is that that's why they took the billions from microsoft because they needed the compute power right yeah i mean that's yeah it's sam altman uh, he was on he still Lex. hasn't made money yet uh, i don't <laughs> <laughs> I I cannot believe that to be true. No, because he was actually one of the early investors in Reddit, and Reddit just went public. So I think he just made a lot of money. Really? Yeah. What's um, the value of Reddit? Oh, you look, it's billions. I, no, no. Oh, what I is inter- the value? Yeah, it just um, seems like a big, like a gossipy bitch fest place. I mean, an, an anonymous internet forum where you just—I mean, also the real value for the actual investors is because the data. So you have all of this data. That you can, you know, train your models on now. Whoever like purchases and makes those deals with Reddit gets mm-hmm. a lot of human data. Actually, this is crazy. I was reminded about this. Um, I, I spoke at the <laughs> Nvidia conference, and so someone um, up there, I can't say who, but uh, mm-hmm. in like, ooh, this was probably almost like four years ago. I had been calling him to see if I could get access to a transformer model. 
which is the G, G, the T in GPT stands for transgenerative tr- okay. pre-trained transformer. And he's like, yeah, you don't remember? He's like, and you were calling to see like if it can write scripts. And I said, that, no, we can't give you access to it because it's trained on Reddit data. And it like, it wasn't, it was just, and I was like, oh yeah, like I remembered this whole thing. And it was like, he's like, yeah, you were like four years ahead of your time, like trying to like do this stuff. And anyway, um, that was, I was, I was like, oh yeah, there, there was this whole experiment that I was like going through. But it, as a side note, um, it was trained on Reddit data. That's why I brought it up. Uh, so, oh, well, okay, I feel like we didn't finish the train of thought. What we were saying, Sam Altman. Yeah. So um, then we were we were talking about this. Oh, wait, got the rocket so, through Mustafa. Yeah. So is so you. It's not that they gutted the company, but they sort of took their top level talent, Microsoft. Yeah. yeah that that's what it appears. So and they're probably, just becoming even more of a behemoth. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's and I and I would guess that it's you know. Like again, that's why I brought up the Sam thing because it's the the rocket fuel, the ability to have compute. You know, it's like in just these GPUs and CPUs and all. It's like this is what seems to be needed. Like I, I was saying, Sam, I think said on Lex's podcast that he thinks compute power is going to be the currency of the future or something like that. Really? Yeah. Your time and computing power. Yeah, I mean that's the you know Naval quote about time. It's like you don't use time to. Like you don't use your time to make money, you make money to use your time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's so interesting yeah. for me. I see all this. I know you're optimistic that then it'll free you up to do other things. Ooh. But oh, wait. It, doesn't it already? We have some no, examples. No, because now I mean I could bring my phone over here and now people have six ways to get a hold of me. So now instead of having to respond once, like through the telephone. I have to respond six ways, and you're going to talk to me about having a, a you know an AI assistant who consolidates everything and answers everything. I would. I don't think that's realistic. I was just going to bring up one very real example that, that where there was a day not too long ago where we were gonna, we were going to go do something all together, and you had to uh, write notes for this whole thing mm-hmm. and you were able to upload that whole thing yes and get it to give you exactly what you needed and all of a sudden the like two hours that you had just said okay i need two hours and i'll be back it's like oh yeah. guys no we can go now but here's what i think and yeah. i agree with you on yeah. this i just think it's going to make it so that i go oh i can do more work yes i i get so i, I get that so i i Again, agree yeah. with you but yep. then my tendency is like well that's done check yep. Yep. what's next on the list not yep. I'm going to go snuggle with Laird. Right. So. But that's a change in perspective. That's like. Yeah. Oh, yeah no, that's, it's a, yeah. that's the only thing sometimes. But I, I, I get s- that. Yeah. So it's just kind of navigating that. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about one of your favorite podcasts? Just share it with people. One of my favorite podcasts? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, but I. I no, one that shows up over and over. You talk to me about it I, all the I time. I think if you're talking about the same, I think it's the all-in podcast. Yeah. I think I just want to share that with people oh, so they know. Oh my God. Like that resource of those four guys yeah. they are so brilliant and know this world and they speak so openly that is just I, i'm just amazed that this is i don't know where it is on the charts but it's like this should be up there with you know yeah. one and two like it is so invaluable to hear these perspectives from these guys that are the inside players and they're so it's not just the like breadth but the depth of knowledge mm-hmm. like they spend time really thinking and researching all of these different areas yeah anyway all in podcasts yeah. Chamath and yeah, all those. I, I, I signed up for his what he read this week. Yes. yes. I haven't had the time to check it out, but I, my, the intention is there. Yes, yeah. uh, so I just want to say that to people because um, yeah. I think it's important when you hear something really good or, you know, something that can really enhance yeah. your perspective or teach you something because it's they don't all agree. They have different opinions. So they really intelligently weigh in and discuss things situations issues of the world and i think that that's really important so yeah. let's uh i agree make sure to share that um japan <laughs> we don't know what it means so south korea is the low right there they have the quickest most declining birth rate oh i don't know the numbers i, I think, think it I, is i thought uh, japan's right there I didn't, yeah uh, i think yeah. they're both oh and check this out did mm-hmm. you know this um of course you did because you and i listened to a lot of the same stuff one third of Japanese under 30 are virgins. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Well, I, that's that goes to what you're about to say. Yeah. One third. I, I, I heard it. I know. I mean. We don't want to have sex anymore? Well, I don't say, you can't say we. But, but <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, we're coming to a world where there's a substitution for real 
I mean, and I and and actually, I would I sort of feel like I know the Japanese are shy and everything's very discreet, but the thing is, they've have a they're notoriously provocative, like their culture. You know the geisha, like they have a very provocative history in in sexuality, yeah. and now it's like one third of people under thirty are virgins. Yeah. yeah. When did sex and this idea of the possibility of having children become something that people are like really fired up or controversial about? Or um, listen, I'm not saying it's for everybody because it's not, and it hasn't always it, it never has been for everybody nor should it be but they've even made sort of this idea of like having a baby or get a baby as like this like loud combative idea i watched these women wait, wait, i watched like a woman it, it's a negative thing yes i watched a woman the other day talking about you know make it worth my while if i'm going to use my uterus to have a baby and I was like, when did we get so far? What does that mean, make it worth my while? Because, you know, men don't give up their leisure time. And we get, you know, in a way we're penalized for having babies. And, you know, it is a hard job. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, you, they don't hand you a paycheck when you do it. But right. they barely say good job. But it's it's sort of been morphed. I, I've seen with a sort of a, a younger group of females of like, I don't, it's, it's been so removed from something that you would consider as like a biological, like the, like this idea of a, of mother is, is been sort of depicted as weakened versus like it's mother earth, mm -hmm. you know, cherish the mother, you the know, like, empowerment. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's so interesting for me and I, I, I know it's probably a small sliver but it's become sort of a thing like, yeah, mm, I think I'm going to go backpacking and enjoy my life. Hmm. And I think that's great. I just am curious what the end, because that's cool when you're in your 20s and 30s and getting after it. But I do think there's a time of consideration. Yeah. Not saying, hey, yeah, I yeah. needed to do it yeah. or you need to do it to be complete. I know you're scared to say anything, Elijah. I totally appreciate that. But it is a fascinating. I mean, I'm being respectful because yeah. I can't comment on the, you know, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, female yeah. perspective. Like, it, no, it, it, but it's not that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a society. It's we're all in this together. But you're specifically talking everybody about everybody has a mother. Yeah, yeah. But you're specifically referring to women's these women's perspective that I don't know, yeah. like personally. So I can't like make a comment on. Oh, but, they should. But or they you, shouldn't. you, you can't. You have noticed because you do date a lot of women freezing. Right, their eggs. Their eggs. Their eggs. Uh, absolutely, yeah, that's true. You scared? You just fold your arms. Well, no, I, I was like, oh, that is something that, like, I can, I could just that is, I've noticed that that has been a surprising thing to me. The amount of just not even dates, actually, it's just like fr female friends that are just. And like, I understand why you would like. Let's say you you, you go, hey, I'm going to dedicate this time to building a career. I just haven't yeah. really found somebody that I'm inspired to do that. Maybe I want to have that as a possibility later i totally get yeah. why you would do it i'm not even having i don't have a comment on that but sure. that it's prevalent like it seems more and more women are doing that yeah yeah i i, I think it's for the reasons that you said because it's, it's like you know the I, I i don't i know the for me as a man like i have that feeling of or i've had that feeling in the past of like you know i i want to have be at a certain place when I have kids. I want to be able to do this yes. certain thing. And so I can like, but as a guy, it's different because I don't have the same kind of clock no, you ticking in my head. And I would imagine I'm just, you know, saying from my perspective, but that I, well, you may, it's not about ticking in your head. It's actually like ticking in your sperm. I right, mean, let's face right. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it's, again, so it's like, I can see that and I get all that, but that makes sense in the context of like, no, I, I want to freeze my eggs because like, I want to be able to provide in a certain way. I want to, you know, there's, I don't want to feel like I had regrets. I don't want to feel like I wish I did this thing. Mm -hmm. So I can hear that. And I, for me, I'm just like, I, I really hope this thing, I hope it works that the way that they promise it will, you know. You know what I'm trying to figure out? It's really been coming to me a lot is... So they talk about the patriarchy, right? Like this is like a young generation's favorite word. They barely, I think a lot of them don't even know what it means or why they feel that way. I don't know if it's been a personal experience or they've even done some research on it. 
Um, but there's also not, there's no denying elements of that. Okay. And obviously a long time ago, it was connected probably a lot to biological responsibility, right? Like Mm -hmm. you have your period, you're having babies, you, you know, you're not going out there. And then of course, maybe a group in power wants to stay in power. So they're like, you know, those little ladies don't need voting rights. Like I get the setup, right? But I feel like we're at a time, uh, and maybe it's my own experience, I, I don't feel that the majority of men want to hold back women. Hmm. I don't feel that way. Of course, there's always a few bad apples. So I, I got to say something there because it's so interesting to me because I I know what you're saying. You also, the, I had to see this from an outside female's perspective, point this out to me because you're also surrounded by some of the best men in the world. And but I, where? who else would I be surrounded by? Okay, but, but that was a conscious decision or unconscious. Or con, but it, that is your life. If you look at it, like the majority of, of men yes. that show up here are like... Well, no, yeah, people. People, yes. And this is something that was pointed out to me by a female friend of mine. She was okay. like, we were at this, uh, it was at the MAPS conference. At the, okay. And it was, you know, 11,000 people. And she's just like, look, just look around at the ratio of like of guys to girls. And then like, you know, just observe the guys and observe the girls. And you're just like, oh my... I. I was amazed at the level of, uh, to say it nicely, inconsideration. Just what does to- that mean? Just to- just the inconsiderate nature of so many of these men, and just like uh, even just like you know pu- pushing people aside, total like you know lack of spatial awareness, just like, interrupting, talking over, just like it, it was kind of like oh I, I, until because for me at that conference I was not really paying attention to the men, like I was you know yeah. I knew my I had my friends I was there talking, it was like yeah cool. I know what you were looking at yeah so uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but when she pointed that out to me from this female's perspective and she was like just look and we were like I remember we were standing at this hall and I started looking and observing and just you it was it was kind okay. of okay and maybe yeah, because I, I am also larger oh that's I don't yes. experience it on that level that's what I'm saying that's, that's why true. I don't want to have the conversation because I'm trying to really understand right because I think if you want to make a change you have to make it from the inside yeah so you got to get in there you can't be on the outside complaining about the way that it is I think one of the more effective ways is you have to get inside and you have to change it from the inside. And you have to have allies mm-hmm. of both genders. Yeah. Because they're on the inside too. Yeah. So I guess I'm just curious how we can support a positive shift because it feels like it's ramping up. You know, this sort of uh, dissension, especially females towards males. Like maybe they finally got on the platform or they finally can say how they feel. But I think it goes to the point where it's also not going to give them what they want. Like if I was only going to look at it from the female side. Yeah. So it's like, what's the dance of saying, hey, this, these things have felt unfair. I, I do feel judged differently than they do. It's, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, you know, okay, granted, you teach young men, but, don't you, but also not to the point where you make them so scared that they can't say anything or be who they are. Right, so it's this weird combative thing. Um, yeah, that I'm I'm curious how it's gonna it's gonna go. Yeah, and and from my perspective, it's like I can see, especially younger guys that will have conversations with me. And it's like, no, I, there's a very real place for positive male role models that is just missing. There's a huge hole, and I think that's why people like Jordan Peterson resonated so deeply with so many millions of people because he was just like, make your bed. You but know? why are people, why do they go for him? I mean, I have close friends that are are like, oh, he's dangerous. Oh, I don't know about dangerous, but he said some crazy shit too. Let's be real. Okay, okay, he, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we, remember, I remember we were looking at the thing at the same time when he, like, he tweeted just out of nowhere. Oh, about like, the model yeah, he's like, and he's stuff. Like, this is not beautiful. Yeah, I think, like, I think what? sometimes when people get fame, especially later in life, they almost should take a course. This, this and awesome. I don't mean, yeah, yeah. I don't mean that in a derogatory no, way, yeah. but. <clears throat> it's kind of like you're an educator or you're like in a personal practice and then all of a sudden you're really famous and sometimes it's like yo grab a gear yeah i that felt like a reaction that this is what that's all i'm saying I'm to saying too much says, attention says crazy shit and so i think that people can hear that and get misconstrued and then he can be on the daily wire so he's a conservative or you know they, they start yeah. to just lump him into the thing if you haven't mm-hmm. taken the time to read the books or whatever it is so okay it's like again nobody's perfect do what's, your best what, yeah, to what, make your bed yeah what's your batting average you know yeah. it's, like, it's like for that's so i listen to 
all of these people that are, you know, all, all conversations. It's like, you know, how, how, how much am I really taking in and like, where is this information coming from? Is this someone that I want to emulate on the level that they're speaking to me from? You know, is this specific thing that they're telling so me about? So hard because we're so flawed. Oh, but we all are. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like people were just so wildly flawed. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's like pulling bits and pieces. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. don't shoot the messenger and what's yeah. your batting average? You know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I, I wouldn't have thought this because I, I, I do think of myself as highly independent and I, I always have and, you know, strong enough, whatever. I like the idea that if some if I'm somewhere and I'm with a male friend or Laird or somebody, if they feel like they would like to protect me or make sure I'm okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I like that Laird's outside right now as we speak you know, chainsawing my yard into order. Yeah. Um, thanks. Yeah. So I, I guess my hope is, is that we can heal. Everyone can be better and we can heal these bridges because they talk about the divine femininity, but there is the divine masculine and like anything in its true essence, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah. And of course, you're always going to have a couple knuckleheads that come in and abuse it or get taken over by their, you know, hormones, their testosterone and whatever. Yeah. But I, I don't want to say it's almost like to ignore those guys, those people, but it, it's the same when I see a woman that I know she's just trying to get pregnant to have someone pay her bills. Hmm. Interesting analogy. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. So I just ignore it. I, she's not a representation to me of women. Right. It's like, oh, it's that kind of person. Right. It's the same with some dude that's doing whatever. It's like, yeah. okay, just keep go- looking for the good stuff yeah. and try to be the good stuff. Yeah. But anyway, it's been, I, f- I feel like it's really been on my mind. Really interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. I, as much as I'm an advocate for females, I'm an advocate for men because I feel like the more both are doing better, then it's all better. I agree. Humans, so, yeah. Oh, right, we'll figure out the dance. Yeah. Um, you, you brought that up, I think, in the context of the AI, or J- Japan using AI for. Yeah. For so, okay. Just, sorry. It, I, that, that got me off because then there are all these poor virgins out there. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I guess. It, I mean, it, really? One third under 30? Okay. It, that's what the numbers say. I've not been to Japan in a long time, so I can't <laughs> verify that. But um, the, the, the AI thing was just that. Uh, it, I, it was just a report that they were using AI to match people using compatibility metrics and like tracking the whole population and trying to just like get people to have babies because the birth rates are declining so fast. And so, hey, this guy f- four miles away is really, I mean, how are they doing that? Again, like I, I, do, I didn't look into that deeply. I was like, this is just like a headline. It was just like, but they are using it to, you know, see Isn't com- it compatibility. Called, um like Bumble or Raya? I mean, what's it called? I, I, think, this, I think it's much more elaborate. <laughs> Yeah, I think because it's not just like, oh, uh, like those are the apps and that's more like, um, you know, you're having to do something. Mm-hmm. This is more like a, an experience that's I, like, the, it's, I don't know if it's the government or who's running it, but they're going in and being like, hey, you two should meet, you know. It's like, so it's like AI. Um, matchmaking. F- fixed marriages. So so we're Boy. taking modern <laughs> and ancient. Arranged uh, marriage by AI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I hope you meet someone soon, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I hear you. I, I, I hear you. I, I, I hear you. I, yeah. Oh, I hear you. I'm just like, yeah, okay, that, that's up to the universe. Yeah. <laughs> I, ooh. I, I hear you, Gabby. Ooh. I hear you. I know. Yeah. Do you like my purse? <laughs> I mean, come on. <sighs> yeah. Listen, people, this is why I'm pushing every day training and taking care of yourself. Yeah. I think it, I think it takes up some of the bandwidth that really does help you deal with everything else and makes things just a lot more clear. For sure, yeah. it's complicated, and in some ways, it's not that complicated. You know, it's like let's move a bit, let's work some, let's love each other, mm-hmm. let's have a meal. You know, once in a while, go do something fun. Like it, it's not that complicated, and we and try to keep learning. Like it, we've made it so complicated. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> Cause 
I mean, is there anything better like enjoying a meal with people you 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 have fun with and enjoy their company, and then like catching a sunset? Like at the end of the day, like that's what do we got? Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I, that, that's a I mean, yes. I, I I think I was just like pausing with the you know. It's so we say it's so easy. I don't know how easy it is for so many people, and I get that like like on on a fundamental level, it should be so easy, but. The, the structures that are in place, at least in this yeah. country, like mm. it, it doesn't seem so easy. Right. I guess that's why maybe sometimes getting that perspective, yeah. that's why I call, I say that the, the fitness gives me the distance mm. to get the perspective so that when you enter, you're entering with a purpose. You're not inside the city streets, not seeing everything from above, but you're yeah. going, I need to go there. Okay. Don't waste time. I need to go yeah. there. Okay. I need to go there. Yeah. Because listen, we're all. I didn't say it wasn't hard work. Right. No. I understand hard work. For sure. But how do we sim- keep simplifying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. In it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know either. But but I think that that's that's the objective. Mm. You know, and especially with all these things exploding all around us, it's like coming back to those and you know who are you and what can you take care of inside of you mentally emotionally physically like what are the things that you can if if we are on a runaway freight train on a dark and stormy night yeah if you're a passenger on that train looking like all right like are you comfortable in your seat you know like well are you hydrated <laughs> are you eating good how are you feeling you know like yeah. what are you how are you doing and then next step out how are you then interacting who are you interacting with you know these are the things that it's like i don't know you say oh these are the things we can control can control I don't know, but these are the things that we at least seem to have an influence on. Okay. Yeah. I sent you a picture of that AI model, the girl. Oh, yeah, but like... No, you, I know, yeah. but it's just, it is pretty crazy. Yeah, but I, I feel like I've shown you things. I, I can you show have. you things that are crazier. You, you, yeah. I, I know, it's just crazy, yeah. like the reflections, the yeah. pores, oh, yeah. the freckles. Oh, yeah. No, no, I mean, we're talking about, for anyone's, we're talking about AI imagery, like a photo realistic humans that you cannot tell the difference. Yeah, so I'm going to actually start working in that because I don't know if I might have mentioned this a few times. Laird is really, you know, he doesn't have any social media on his phone. And when I have to tell him that we have to shoot something for social media, it puts a strain on it. It's like, it's. That's not his thing. No. I, and, I, I remember there was some podcast you guys were on and they were like, and Laird, where can we find you? And he's like, you can find me in the Pacific <laughs> Ocean. <laughs> yeah. And so, for example, uh, we have this relationship with uh, Land Rover. I'm going to get him, you know, coming and going, but man, I'm going to AI it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Why not? That. For sure. You're talking to me about it's a tool. Yeah. Let's well, go. Here we go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what all at the NVIDIA conference, that was the whole thing I was talking about. It was just like, Did you let's hear go. anything else about anything that you can talk about at the NVIDIA conference that was interesting to you? Um, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, just, just being there was ridiculous. I mean, this is a computer graphics, com- like a computer chip making company. Yeah. And they packed. The San Jose Arena. There was seventeen thousand people in there for the Jensen, the CEO's keynote, like a rock concert. Like, but why are they there? Why? What? I think for a lot of different reasons. I think that a lot of people intuitively feel, or it's just not just a, the stock price deal. It's, it might some might be because of the stock price. Okay, it could have made a lot of millionaires, but I think it's not just that. I think that it's people feel this is the thing. Like this is it, and it referring to anything that you want, whether that's healthcare, entertainment, you just name it, you know, th- this is the thing it is, you know, we've t- I've said it before and I'll say it again, that this is not a bubble. This is an underlying meta technology that informs all other technologies. So 17,000 people packed in arena to see just, a chip maker. Yes. Mm. Like that was surprising to see. Like, even if you see the footage of it, you're like, what is, ha- what, what? There's not, there's not an Apple conference that's like, for a chip making company? Yeah. Because these are the guys making the chips that are powering this revolution that, you know, that makes the industrial revolution look like a joke. What's the security on that? What do you mean? Well, where do they produce this stuff? Oh, the chips? Yeah. I mean, I think the majority is Taiwan. Okay, so they, yeah. they develop it in Northern Cal? Yeah, no, they have, in their yeah, labs yeah, yeah. They, there. They have facilities up in, but I mean, all that, like, it must be amazing how secure, what? See, maybe they should do a TV show or a movie on the es- technology espionage. Oh, yeah, that's how a Chinese spy just got caught coming out of Google. Like, there was some 
person worked at Google that ended up just being caught as a Chinese spy that was sending information back to the CCP. Really? Yeah. Um, but but I, I mean, th this is a scary thought, but I've heard it like discussed by rational people that they're like, if China really does think that U.S. is going to develop AGI before them, which it yeah. looks like we yeah. are, they're like, it, it would be in their best interest to nuke the Silicon Valley is what they said. Yeah. I mean, and it was just like, I mean, I, obviously it's like, no, it, that's course. not going to happen. It's crazy, but it's like, that's just... It, that's the kind of thinking cause, because the power of this. Right, because that's what the next war is going to be. It's, it's going to be an yeah. information war. It's, this, it, but this, I, it, it, to my understanding and a lot of the understanding of a lot of people that understand this stuff very well that mm -hmm. have told me, it's like this, wh whoever gets this wins the game. Right. Sure. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Okay. And again, but, but you, to, to say that to you, it's like you have to define what winning means. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and within that, then, you know, what does that mean for you, uh, every individual? Yeah. Well, and I, and I guess I think of myself, but then I think broader and I open up more because of my girls. Yeah, absolutely. And their and generation and their life. Totally. Okay. So in wrapping this up this week, yeah. are you feeling hopeful? <sighs> that word. Uh, okay. You don't like that word. Well, no, it's, yeah, it's you a, feel yeah, optimistic. Yeah. Is it, are you leaning towards the positive? Like, what is it? Yeah. I, I, I think I've said to you this quote that I think is just accurate that nobody knows enough to be a pessimist. Hmm. And so I, 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 am I leaning towards the, the positive? Yeah. Um, okay. am I, am I certain about it? No. Uh, am I, am I intuitively feeling that like, when I say that things are going to be stranger than we can imagine, there's something very interesting to me about that. And it's not negative. Okay. It's just different. And, um, I mean, it's like also, you're, it's like, what level are you asking at? Like an interpersonal level, like a, a work level or like a whole societal wide, yeah, large the in, world intuitive yeah, at the world level. It's yeah. I, 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 mean, I am optimistic and like just even that neural link thing being a small example, like it's a, listen, if Japan can, do digital AI matchmaking, go for it. You know, like we also, there was this um, startup that used uh, AI baby dolls for people with dementia and it made them more like attentive and caring and like was, I think, producing more gray matter in their brain or some something like that. But because there were these little digital dolls that they could have these interactions with and had mm -hmm. to caretake and for them it felt real because the thing can talk to it and, mm -hmm. or you can talk to the thing. Are they um, changing diapers? I don't think it went that far. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know. The maybe. But I'm there, just joking. No, 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 no. There were things like it did get <laughs> then the hot. the brain started people, to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, they do have a name for that. Yeah. Baby brain. No. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, there's there's things like that, and there, and a lot more. But those little examples, it's like, yeah, we 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 can. This can be done right. Do you do you put guardrails up for yourself when it comes to how you use technology and do you have like a personal kind of, you, you know, I think we all set our, it's our values. It's mm -hmm. how, whatever guardrails we're presenting all the time. Right. Yeah. Um, to ourselves, do you have, have you developed guardrails? Cause you seem very disciplined to me overall with your technology. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you, how do you do that? Um, I mean, I think it, the answer is it depends on the day. Because if it's a really packed, like if this is time crunch and got to get it done, it's like, you know, all, all bets are off. Like, okay, I'm, I'm responding to emails whenever mm -hmm. I need to. Like, I'm here to get this done if that's mm -hmm. what it takes. In general, though, no. I mean, like, I, in general, meaning that I, I really am conscientious about, like, you know, putting the phone down, you know, but, but like de detaching myself digitally, you know, before I go to sleep. And then, like, not just picking it up first thing in the morning and, like, mm -hmm. taking enough time to, like, you know, drink water and just, like, just be and think and try and pay attention to my dreams and you know those things and then it's like all right knowing that when i open up that thing it's like mm -hmm. i always I always kind of take a breath it's like all right you know like i'm i'm preparing myself to engage with whatever this thing is about to show me right yeah yeah i think it's important that we develop these systems yeah uh in place um uh, the that author that we were talking about who was on rogan was talking about the anxiety for young people oh, and it was God like don't I, yeah, yeah don't give them a smartphone till they're 16 right no no excuse me high school no social media to 16 um clean school so no no phones no in phones. school and then like what get outside or play yeah right 
Yeah. And, and, and also, the, yeah, I know you know this to be true with the girls, but like him just saying that, that they all agreed, all the kids that he interviewed, even his daughters were like, yeah. no, if everybody else got rid of I it, know. I would be happy to. My daughter said that too. Yeah. She didn't, she's like, I could care less about having TikTok. It's, it's just as long as my, my friends don't have it. That's huge. Which dude. is great. Yeah. Um, I, then I started, I just started thinking, I'm like, yeah, they won't give them social media or smartphone to high school. So they'll go back to having more sex. <laughs> maybe, maybe you, you, you're not wrong. You're really not wrong. Oh my goodness. But, yeah. And, and, and Something again, to do. A hundred percent. You're like, Oh, a hundred percent. Like that. You're like, you're like, wait, like I can't look down. So I'm going to look up. And yeah. Hey, Oh Ooh. yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's right. Yeah, maybe those Japanese will get some of those, those virgins. Maybe, maybe I just, or, or, or it's an How AI. About not the AI game. match making what they do is they just turn the internet off after 10 p.m oh, and wow. then they'll be procreating they'll be at the bars and like hey you know it would probably shut down the economy but yeah do well, they could figure it out target like let their banks or do whatever i'm sure what an interesting concept. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is it that simple if you just shut the internet off hell yeah yeah well what else would they do yeah. they'd be like oh let's have, might as well have sex I, yeah it's <laughs> something like yeah you're right yeah you do it maybe it's just we're so simple. No, because I was like, because like, it can't be, because yeah, yeah, you're streaming stuff on TV. So no, yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, no, yeah, just yeah. turn that off. You would be definitely, it's like a hurricane. You know how many babies are born 10 months right after? Right. By the way, right. everyone, it's nine months to make us less scared, but it's really closer to 10, <laughs> just so we're clear. Yeah, I didn't know. That. Yeah. But know. somehow weirdly, like you're more pregnant when you go in on your first appointment than you could possibly be from your cycle, but they say 40 weeks. It's a whole weird dance. So it's probably like nine and a half months. Okay. But let me tell you, after yeah. a hurricane. Yeah. Lots of babies. Wow. What should we do? No power. Well. Well, yeah, well, that's, there's okay. something, you're not there we wrong. Go. There's All something right. to it. Vote for me. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that job. Oh my gosh. All right. Any yeah. other invitation? No, I don't. It, oh. hmm. Any, definitely kill the messenger. I'd be oh, out in about four minutes. They'd be like, let me tell you about what Gabby's done. Oh my God. Um, any other invitations you want to make to people? Hmm. Something to read, something to watch, something to think about before we we yeah. head off. Yeah, one, one interesting thing, and this kind of isn't, it's just a reframing of a sentence, is I heard someone say, they're like, you're going to compete with AI, you know, for your job. Mm -hmm. But they meant it as, you're going to compete with AI mm. for your job. And that emphasis on the syllable <laughs> so what you're difference. saying is stay don't be for afraid dibble get to put your toe in the water pay attention pay attention yeah yeah okay yeah. all right well until next time elijah allen blitz uh and i'll i'll definitely uh, see you at my counter soon for and sure. uh for those of you listening thanks for spending time with us and um you know this idea of all hands on deck yeah let's all just keep doing our best because uh it's it's always critical and it's really critical yeah. right now. And I, I really I think that's all we got. Yeah. It's just let's yeah, do our do our best. That's let's do it. Is that a chainsaw I hear? That's a chain that is a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that guy doing his damn best, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Laird's not confused. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Lash. Right. Thanks, Love you. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you want to learn more, there is a ton of valuable information on my website. All you have to do is go to GabrielleReese.com or head to the episode show notes to find a full breakdown with helpful links to studies, research, books, podcasts, and so much more. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and send them to at Gabby Reese on Instagram. And if you feel inspired, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.